Welcome to Growth Island, your go-to podcast on how to be the best version of yourself. Now, let's join your host, Mess Freeze, as he interviews high performers and experts in nutrition, meditation, exercise, relationships, business, general health, and life's bigger mysteries. So today we're going to learn about feedback because we all know the experience of saying something wrong. You had a nice intent and then it got received in a different way. So I'm really glad and honored to have Danny Lillenkrantz in with me today. He is a coach who has been helping people around the world. And he also worked for Camp 2 North, where he's a facilitator, which is a really cool place where you help uh, young kids or teenagers figure out how to get the best tools for a good life, how to love themselves and how to communicate in a better way. And then on top of that, he's advising some really cool companies, some leaders around Denmark about how to give proper feedback. So that's going to be really interesting. So uh, Danny, thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, hi, Mess. Thank you so much for having me. So Danny, how did you become an expert on feedback? Was that a girlfriend that you said something wrong to or from a boss or how did that <laughs> start? I, I think it's a mix of both. Um, isn't, don't we all get feedback from our, uh, in our relationships? Um, but it's a little bit different than, than that version, actually. Um, I, I worked in a private company working as an engineer, actually. I have a background in engineering. I have yeah. a master's in robotics engineering. Um, nobody really knows that now, but um, I, I worked there for four years and uh, eventually I started working more with developing teams and developing uh, people instead of developing robots and software. Um, and then I thought to myself, what is it that I really think is interesting? That's the people's part. So then after about four years, I, I quit my job because I wanted to create a burning platform for myself. So I stood there without a job. And then I asked myself, okay, what is it actually that I, I love doing? I am somewhat good at and at the same time, the world needs and the world is willing to pay for. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I see as a big need is the ability to give feedback. And it's also something I realized that I have been doing, well, since I was 10 or 12, my mother tells me, I can share that story later. Um, yeah. But I've been giving feedback all my life, apparently. Um, yeah. So that's how it, it sort of came about. And then after I realized, okay, this is really important. I want to do more of this professionally. I started digging into what's the research? How does it, how does it work when feedback culture really works? What is it that um, is a good idea but doesn't work in reality? And what actually makes it work in reality? So that's what I've been digging into the last two years um, when I've been working with companies and, and teams and leaders trying to help them improve their feedback culture and personally making them better at receiving and giving feedback. So why is it that feedback is so important? Uh, it's, th there's so many interesting things about feedback. It seems so simple, but at the end of the day, I think it comes down to that we all want to improve. Everybody wants to get better over time because everybody likes being good at something. That's just a, a natural thing. We want to be good at stuff we want to be skillful right so we want to improve but at the same time we also want to we also want to know that we're good enough just the way we are i'm good enough as a human being i have self-worth and feedback is a is a it lands right in the middle of those two so it's it's right in the junction between help me improve and tell me i'm good enough and feedback is interesting because it's it's one of the fastest ways to learn anything. If you want to get better at anything, get somebody to give you good feedback. Yeah, I think that's the simplest thing, actually. If you want to get good at anything, find somebody who can give you good feedback. Totally agree. <laughs> and it's something that seems so simple and that everyone has been giving feedback, so we should be quite good at it. But it's so hard to give proper feedback. It is, isn't it? Why is it so difficult to give some good feedback? Yeah, We've I, been doing it our entire life, so shouldn't we be really good at it? I, you would think so, right? But the, the thing is that I, I have this metaphor I like to use when I talk about feedback, and that is that um, imagine running on a field with friends and you're throwing balls at each other, right? But instead of this being a tennis ball or a soccer ball or, or something like that, this ball is feedback. The thing is, though, we don't have any shared or common rules about how to deliver feedback. Mm. 
So that means on that field, some people are going to throw that tennis ball really hard. Some people never really practiced throwing or catching that ball, so they will duck or they will turn their back against it because they don't like the idea of catching. They they weren't comfortable catching balls. Some people will be really afraid to hurt other people that they will sort of just roll the tennis ball along the field, which yeah. means the receiver, receiver will never realize that feedback was given. So I think the, mm. the whole point is that we we never agreed on how to give and receive feedback um, from each other. And and I think that's a big, big reason that it's difficult. And the other thing is that it's similar to running. Everybody knows how to run for for the bus. Like, you're late for the bus, you can run. That's fine. But most people, if they just started running a marathon tomorrow, would have an injury. Because we didn't actually learn how to run properly. We didn't go to a club and we didn't get feedback on how to run more correctly so we didn't get injures, injuries. And it's also the same with feedback that none of us practiced it theoretically and, and really tried it in the training room, in the gym. Um, so we think we know how to do it, but often we get injured or we injure the relationship, metaphorically speaking, right? Um, so... I think it's because we we think it's supposed to be easy, so we don't practice, and then we actually fail and we become afraid of it. Yeah. So how do you give proper feedback? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. It depends. It depends on many different things, but I think there are some key factors you want to remember. I was uh, interviewing a, a Danish uh, sociologist, Annette Prein, her name is, and she wrote some really cool books about the brain. She's a neuro... Uh, nerd, I would call her. And sh she told me this really nice um, phrase, which was to make sure you uphold the receiver's status. So that's the purpose. When you give feedback, or not the purpose, but that's the, um, uh, that's the most important thing to keep in mind. When you give somebody feedback, make sure that their status is always intact. It doesn't mean that you can't tell them that they did something poorly, because you should also give direct feedback, but it means that they shouldn't feel that they were that they're less worth when you hand over the feedback. That's really important because when it comes to feedback, the most important thing is that the receiver takes it in, right? <laughs> Otherwise, the feedback is about our ego. Like if I give you feedback on this podcast, not really being interested in you learning, but more being interested in you thinking that I'm good at feedback then who cares? It's just my ego that gets satisfied. And that's important with feedback. We got to think about what can the receiver really take away from this? And that's where less is more comes in. Really think about what is the most important thing to give to my receiver. So we want to think about upholding their status because if they don't have a sense of self-worth when I give them the feedback, their amygdala, their whole neurochemistry in their brain is going to go into defense. And when that happens, no learning takes place. We simply know that when the amygdala, that brain part, that part of our brain that is the fight or flight response center, um, when that center is engaged actively, then the prefrontal cortex, which is our thinking brain or the clever part of our brain, it simply uh, takes over. It's called an amygdala hijack, which means that if you end up in a fear or fight response, then the feedback is not received at all. And then we didn't get anywhere. So I think that's the most important part, that you want to give feedback that makes the other person feel good, not necessarily right away, but they should see the point of this. They should feel s somehow that it's going to make them better. It makes a lot of sense. I mm. think everyone has tried, but they started giving feedback and you could just see the eyes of the other person oh, yeah. <laughs> turning and, off. Uh, it's just like, oops, I said something wrong. Like, damn it. Yeah. And then yeah. how do you fix it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I've heard about the burger model. Mm. Terrible. What's your terrible opinion? Well, model. The, yeah, so the burger <laughs> model is is you have uh, the first you say something positive yeah. about the person, give a compliment, then the beef is coming, and then the last part of the bomb, and then that's the positive thing again. Then you have the burger model. Yeah. I don't really find that's very effective because people know about it, so they're like, okay, just give them the feedback instead of the bullshit that you're saying yeah. to cover in the feedback. So what's, is your, that, what's your take on that? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Did you find that when you got the burger model uh, sort of handed to you? Were you thinking like, ah, oh, just give me the feedback? Yeah. Yeah. 
The thing is that the the sandwich or the burger model is mm, it's usually not effective when there's a important meat part to be delivered. So if you want to say something constructive but criticism wise, often I would say just say it. If there's something that could be done better, just say it. Say it in a nice way. Make sure that the person knows your good intentions. So you could say something like, "I I saw something in your presentation that I thought was um, was good, but I think it could be even better, and I'd like to tell you what it is. Would you like to hear it now, or when is a good time?" Um, because that way you don't sort of say, "Ah, great presentation, but." Like we've all heard that um, advice of never also saying but. presentation, <laughs> but all of your slides were crap and what you said was really bad, <laughs> but I liked that you actually got up on stage. Yeah, nice I've, sweater. I've heard that yeah. advice. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible feedback. Yeah, so the sandwich model or the burger model is is not really good if the purpose is to deliver the meat. On the other hand, if somebody asks for feedback, I think it's important both to tell the person what went well and what can be improved. So when I ask for feedback, I deliberately ask for, I don't say the burger model, but I I ask people, what's something that worked for you and what's something you think could be improved? Yeah, Because I know it it does work in that sense that it was initially thought, um, which was that the burger model sort of opens you up because you initially started with something nice, which makes people feel good and that lowers the defense. And then they are more um, receptive to the, to the uh, criticism, right? And it kind of works that way if the person is seeking feedback. Because then if you are asking for feedback and you start out by learning what was actually really well um, or really good about your presentation or report or job or uh, product or whatever, if you start by learning what's really good about it, then you can sort of relax when you learn what can be improved. True. So I, I think in that sense, sometimes it, it does have a, a merit. Yeah. Why is it so hard to receive feedback? So I love to get feedback. Mm. But I also sometimes feel that I start to get warm. I'm like, mess, what's going on? Just get that feedback and accept it. Like you want the feedback, you want to learn, but there's still something happening in the body. What, what is that? It's interesting, right? There's different things going on. And I, I, think, I think the most important thing is actually to appreciate that feeling. Because as soon as you get so used to feedback that you don't have that feeling anymore, you're not getting the, the important feedback. Because when you get important feedback, and when I say important, it's, uh, it's actually quite um, normative or it's, it's, there's a lot of values in that because good feedback in that sentence just means something that you can learn a lot about yourself from. <laughs> um, good feedback can be many other things as well. But my point is that if you start receiving feedback that doesn't make you feel a little bit warm, it's probably because it's not new to you or it's because you're rejecting it completely. So you have a shield, and some of us have a really thick shield or a really powerful, strong shield. And if we have that, then feedback doesn't feel very bad at all. We can just say, ah, thank you very much. But we're actually not listening. On the other hand, if we are really open to feedback, then maybe it hurts more often, and maybe we just take feedback from everybody, which is not a good idea either because you should only get feedback from people you want to learn from or who has skill in the area you want to improve in. And you you should be careful with who you take feedback from. Um, I think that's important too. So the reason it's hard though, to answer your question, is that often feedback challenges your your self-image, if it's personal feedback, right? It challenges the image you have of yourself, there's some researchers from the UK, um, Sheen and, what's her name? Sheila Heen and Douglas Stone, that was their names. Um, and they wrote a book called Thanks for the Feedback. It's a really interesting book when you're, uh, when you're digging into this because it talks about how is it that we're receiving feedback. And I think that's one of the most um, understated skills, and that is, which is to learn how to receive feedback. And what they found was that there are three different ways that we reject feedback. And one of them is that when it's feedback that conflicts with your self-image. 
So that means if I give you feedback, that if that feedback is true, your self-image is wrong, then you can either choose to update your self-image, which is a big deal, or you can just reject the feedback. And I think that feeling you told about, that warm feeling, that sometimes when you know that the feedback is right, then you go like, oh, something's, there's something true here that I need to look into. <laughs> and that, that gives you that warm feeling, right? Yeah, because I was actually thinking like a lot of feedback, it doesn't really make me warm. It's just kind of like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah. Where you're really like, oh, that was cool. Yeah, I should have seen that. Good point. Blah, blah. And then there's that feedback where you kind of like, you have to, I think it's right that you change some of your self-image or your idea about something. And mm. then there's the feedback where you're like, that's total nonsense. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Let me like get feedback from someone that knows a bit more or like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I think it's often also that feedback that gets rejected the most. There's different people who reject different kinds of feedback. That's totally normal. Um, but I think the feedback that conflicts with your self-image is also the feedback that should be delivered by the people who know you the best, or at least that you trust the most. Yeah. So it's like with, um, with shame. Like there, there's the researcher Brenny Brown. She's pretty well known. She has some good insights about um, about shame. Who can you talk to about shame? Because shame is a big deal. And the thing with shame is you get rid of shame by talking about it. But you should only talk with shame with people that you trust and who earned the right to hear about your shame. And it's it's kind of the same with feedback. You should only talk about or receive feedback on your deeper personality traits from people you trust who's earned that relationship with you. Because otherwise there's too big of a risk, I would say, that you reject it or that you get hurt or you don't know what it was about, etc. Yeah. So how do you receive feedback in a proper way and how do you give good feedback? I if think we don't use the burger model, yeah, we're doing no, something else. Giving feedback, we're learning like, something new today. <laughs> yeah, let the, the burger model, we've, we've covered that. <laughs> um, there, there are... I think five important steps when giving feedback and you don't always have to do all five, but it's important to sort of have them in the back of your mind. The first step I always teach to the leaders and to the teams I work with is ask first, which basically just means, hey, is it a good time for some feedback? I noticed something in the meeting I think you could enjoy learning about or that would be good for you or that would be good for the company, etc. So ask first. Obviously, if you just want to give them a pat on the shoulder, you don't have to say, can I give you feedback? Yes. Okay, good job. That That's just silly, right? Just say good job. Um, but obviously, I would like you to be more concrete, which is the next point. Make sure that the feedback you deliver is is concrete and specific enough for the receiver to really know what, what it is they did well. And it should be on behavior that they could change. So make sure it's feedback on behavior that can be changed. And make it specific with examples and um, so specific that they know exactly what it is that they did. And that leads us to that it should be timely. And by that I mean often as soon as possible with the sort of small comment that if they just did a huge presentation that was really important to them, then give them a day because they just want to relax. Or if it was a really big deal, don't do it right after. But don't wait four days either, because then they don't remember the details and it's more difficult to learn from the feedback. And what do you do if someone is very emotional? Emotional how? Like really happy or really sad? <laughs> more the sad. More the sad super part. super stressed out. Mm. So some people seem more um, receptive to see feedback mm. and handle it better. Mm. Where some people you might be afraid that they're going to get really sad, yeah, or might even start crying if you if you give them the feedback for sure, even if you say it in a loving manner. Yeah, S some people, and and that's why it's so hard actually, because you we all have different kinds of um, we call it swing in sort of psychology terms. It's called swing, or that's a nice way to put it at least. It, and it is how how much do you swing if I give you negative feedback or positive feedback? How how far away from your happiness set point, your baseline for how happy you are, how far away from that do you swing when you get negative feedback? 
And some people swing a lot. And that means if I give you negative feedback, you're going to go like, oh my God, my life sucks and I can't, maybe I get fired tomorrow. That's a big swing, right? But if a person with small swing gives feedback to somebody with big swing, they might not be so careful because they don't think it's a big deal. It's, you know, you know it, come on, just relax. It's nothing. And that's why we often miss the feedback. We, we give poor feedback because we are thinking about how we would like to receive feedback instead of thinking, how would it be nice for the receiver to have this feedback delivered? Yeah. So you really want to be receiver focused, right? How does this person take it? And, and I, that's why I think it's so hard, but also important in the beginning to go, hey, I noticed something about your presentation. I think there's something we could improve or something you could get even more good responses. If you did some small tweaks, um, when would you like to hear it? Is now a good time or what would work for you? And then notice their facial expression. Notice their body language. You know, if they're open, if they smile, if they go, oh, great, I would love to learn. Then go ahead, slowly tell them in a nice way. But if they sort of say yes, but their body language starts to close up and their face changes, so you know, okay, now they're really, um, they're not mad or sad yet, but they're tense. Then you want to think about, okay, what's the most important small piece of feedback I can deliver now? And then if that goes really well, then you can say maybe um, there's another thing as well, or I had some more, but maybe we can talk about that some other time. So always make sure that you know where, where they are emotionally. If, if you have the um, fear that this person might really get hurt from the feedback. I, I, like, I like saying more frequent, small, superficial feedback is a lot better than those, um, you know, really big punches to the stomach. Like, oh, I, we've, we've tried that. All of us have probably tried that, right? That somebody gave us feedback and we just remember it for the rest of our lives. It was good. It was good feedback, but we will never go back to that person to ask for feedback again because it hurts so bad. Mm-hmm. And if you want to learn, if you want to have a sort of a learning relationship with somebody, you want them to tell you small bits of feedback often rather than you know, a really big punch. And then you go like, nah, not today. (laughs) Because it hurts too much to engage with you in that conversation. Makes sense. So that was the first three parts. Yeah. Before interrupting you. Yeah. Can we just sum them up again? Yeah, sure. So first you want to make sure that the person is ready. So you can ask first, hey, is now a good time? Then you want to make sure that it's, you get feedback on the behavior that you saw. So it's behavior that they can change that you saw. You do it immediately or within you know, a a day or something so that it's remembered. And then you want to talk about the impact. So instead of just saying you were really um, prepared at the meeting, that was great. Let's say it was praise. Um, Instead of saying good meeting, you were really prepared. You want to, you want to share what the impact of that was. So Hey, thanks, thank, thanks for, the, for the meeting. I just want to let you know I thought it was really well prepared and that made me relax so I could really focus on the content of the meeting because you had the whole framework set up and that really made me relax. So now the receiver knows, okay, when I have this behavior of being really well prepared, the, res- the other meeting participants can relax or my boss can relax or whatever. So you want to know what the impact is. So that's the... That's the step after that. Important to share what's the impact of the behavior. And then finally, it, de- it depends a little bit of, um, on, on, the, on the relationship and so on, but sometimes you want to talk future. So what do you want to do next time, especially if it's criticism or constructive feedback? Um, you want to say, okay, so next time it would be great if you did this tweak or what do you, maybe you can engage in a dialogue. I think that's often better if you have a um, sort of a relationship where you're eye to eye, then you can ask them, what, what do you think you should do next time? Or what do you want to do next time? Because you're often an expert of your sort of, you're only the expert because you have extra eyes. They're the expert in what they delivered often, right? Unless you are clearly a, um, a field expert in what they did, just did, then you can obviously tell them that it would be better in a different way. But yeah, ask ask them and, and talk about the future if it makes sense in your relationship. Yeah. Mm. And then what's a good way to receive feedback? 
what should you do there? When you receive feedback, you want to say thank you and then give yourself time to consider if you want to go back and think about it or if you want to just right away say, that's a great idea, I want to do it. But give yourself permission to say, thanks, I'll think about that. Or thanks, let me just, I, I think I'll just go, go think about how I can take that in. That's perfectly fine. Give yourself permission to say, thank you, I'll write it down. Whatever works for you, but give yourself that pause. So I like the idea of having some buckets you can put the feedback in, like three boxes. And one of the boxes has a big yes written on it. And that's just for the feedback that makes sense. So you just realize, wow, why didn't anybody tell me this before? Now it makes a lot of sense to me. Thank you so much. I'll do that next time. Um, then there is the maybe box, which probably is used quite often. That's where you say, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to give me feedback. Um, I'll think about how I, can, how I can use that. And you put it in the maybe. And it's important that if you put it in the maybe, then you really consider what part of this feedback can be used. You don't have to reject mm. the whole thing and you don't have to accept the whole thing. But what in here is useful and where could the sender of the feedback actually be right? And then there's the no bucket or the no box, which is where you say, thank you. Depending on your relationship with that person, you can say, it's not really what I'm focusing on at the moment. So I appreciate your time, but I also have other things I'm trying to learn right now. Or you can say, thank you, I'll think about it. And then you don't. That's also sometimes the most appropriate thing to do, depending on your relationship. I always like to be honest, but sometimes it's feedback from a stranger and then you can just say thank you. Um, yeah. So I, I like the idea of having three buckets you could put it into so you can sort yeah. of mentalize that. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. So digging into some of the more difficult ones. So I work with a lot of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and it often happens that there's challenges in the co-founder relationship. Okay. Yeah. Can and imagine. the dialogue goes bad. Yeah. What, how do you give proper feedback in that situation after the relationship is already kind of gone a bit negative? Yeah, that's the challenge. You actually want to, you want to start that feedback culture before the relationship goes south, right? So yeah. I think the most important thing in all feedback is trust. If you don't have a good trusting relationship, then you don't know or you don't trust that the other person has good intentions. And that is a key factor. So if you don't have that, then you really got to focus on letting the receiver know that you have good intentions. So imagine it's two um, co-founders and one of them just, maybe he has a behavior that the first person think is really bad for the company. Then he says, instead of saying like, ah, you always do this and it's so annoying and you're never here on time or you always focus on the product where we should be doing sales right now because we really need to, need to get on the market. Um, then it's really important to say, okay, I see where you're coming from or I know that you do it with good intentions or I really trust that you're doing this for good reasons, but I'm not sure it's the right thing to do. So you really got to stress that you believe that the person has good intentions because if the relationship is not very good at the moment, you want to make sure that you don't trigger the defense on the receiver, mm -hmm. like we talked about in the beginning, right? So I, th I think that's the most important part. If you have a person who simply denies the feedback, then there are some other um, strategies you can use. And one of them is to, if the person just says, no, that's, that's not true, you're simply wrong, then if you know that about the person, then you need to sort of gain or um, gather some ed evidence, write down the situations where it happened if you don't necessarily remember them. Sometimes people are not aware of their own bad behavior. And then you got to write down, okay, it was with uh, this person at this meeting, you were actually quite rude. You said this and that, and you rolled your eyes. You know, write down the behavior that could be observed. And then when you confront that person and the person says, no, no, that's not true. <laughs> well, you can say, well, there's this meeting where you did this and this. And I noticed you rolled your eyes just after rejecting their proposal. And it also happened yesterday, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Hmm. And what about when you have to give a boss feedback? Hmm. It's kind of the same thing. You want to make sure that they're interested. 
and you really don't want to mess up with their feeling of status because that's the tricky part. I've worked with a lot of leaders who are um, encouraging feedback and seeking feedback, which is great, but still it's difficult for um, employees to actually give honest and candid feedback to their boss. So I think it's really important that the boss, if he wants or she wants a feedback culture, to go out and ask for feedback and deliberately say, I want you to be honest with me um, or also share, I just got some feedback yesterday from this and that person and it was actually a little bit tough to receive the feedback because it was probably true even though I don't want it to be true. Um, and then tell or that way show your employees how you receive the feedback. I think that's the advice for the manager. Um, but for the employee, make sure that you have a good relationship, make sure that they're open to it. I've given a lot of uh, leaders feedback. I've given, when I was working in a private company, I gave the CTO feedback, I gave the CEO feedback. Um, and it always worked out because I, I was doing these things about making sure that their status was intact, making sure that they could get an even bigger impact with the audience or, you know, always trying to make sure that it was a motivational aspect to it like what could get even better next time yeah mm. and what if you ask for feedback and you don't really receive it what's a good way to encourage more feedback oh it's so typical <laughs> it's so typical that people ask for feedback and they i mean have you ever heard a manager say um if you have any feedback you can just you know always say it my door is always open i'm open for feedback but nothing happens yeah it's so typical and the reason is that it's too broad. It's difficult to give feedback when the when the entire uh, field is open. Like, what what do you want feedback about? Do you want feedback about um, your appearance? Probably not. Is it about your leadership style? Could be, but I'm not sure. Is it about the meeting we just had, or are you thinking about how you? Um, I don't know. What is it about? So when you ask for feedback, you really want to make sure that you give the. Um, the sender some advice for how to how to focus their feedback. And the way I typically do it is by saying, what's one thing I could do differently or what's one thing I should do more or less of for you to be more, um, let's say, comfortable in our one-on-ones. That could be a, a leader asking for or a manager asking for feedback on their one-on-ones. What's one thing I should do more or less of to make it more relevant for you to have these one-on-ones? You can even ask your uh, your girlfriend or boyfriend, what's one thing I should do more or less of to be a better partner for you? I asked my girlfriend yep. that once. And how did that go? That was the next question. How do you give a spouse and proper feedback? Yeah, I think it's actually really important. And I think it's... I think it's um, very inspirational when when I meet people who have board meetings with their relationship uh, or with their family and, or or partner. I mean, um, so uh, what I think is critical here is to again, like with with a company, actually, you want to make sure it's it's a part of a culture and that you focus mostly on what's working well. But um, what I in, invite people to do is ask their partner, "What's one thing you see me doing or not doing?" which is making it difficult for you to enjoy being my girlfriend or boyfriend. What's one thing I should do differently to make it easier for you to relax when we're having a weekend together? Again, with a focus, right? Yeah. So I asked my girlfriend, what's one thing I should do more or less of to make it easier for you to be in a relationship with me? And... My girlfriend is a super introvert. She is the coolest person I know, but she is so different from me. As you can tell from this podcast, I have a lot of words. And my girlfriend has very few words, but they're often a lot better. Which means she takes time to think. So I was asking her that question, and nothing happened. And I waited, and nothing happened. And then eventually she said, well, I think... I think those times when you don't have an upcoming workshop or a presentation you're doing, those days where you just have the night off, it would be really nice if you did, um, it would be really nice if you prepared dinner. 
Like, oh, okay, that's actually quite simple. I can do that. I, I now know that that's important to you. I knew it was important, but I didn't know it was one of the most important things for her. So then I started doing that. I started, actually wrote a post-it for myself. Remember, if you have time and energy, make dinner. Yeah, And simple. I think she appreciates that. Perfect. So what happens if you reject feedback? Mm, for who? What do you mean? So if you get some feedback and you just plainly reject it, what, yeah. what does that mean for, uh, for a relationship? Whether it's with a spouse or a boss, co-worker? Mm. It hurts the relationship in the sense that the person will think that you're not open to feedback. Which means that next time they might not tell you if they have feedback or they might engage less in that conversation. I believe many people have tried this with uh, bosses. They offer some feedback for the team or the company or it could be anything in the company. And the boss maybe says, uh, yeah, sure, uh, I think we have it covered. Then you're like, okay, if you're not interested, then I'm not going to engage. And that's actually some of the worst things you can do is is not <laughs> receiving people's uh, input. So it really hurts the relationship if you if you dismiss feedback that way. It's a lot better to say, thank you, I'm not really um, ready for feedback on this topic right now, or I'm focusing on something else. But really make sure that you tell the person you appreciate them taking the time to give you feedback on this. Yeah. yeah. So jumping a bit. So I know you know a lot about personal development and also how to help people actually reach their goals. Mm. Who, who inspires you in that manner? Where do you go for advice? I have some good mentors in my life who are tremendously brave in being honest and direct with me that I have learned a lot from who are asking me questions that I couldn't ask myself. Um, and they ask me simple questions like, and why is that, Danny? <laughs> and then I go, hmm, I don't know, actually. And and they ask me in, at the right time because that's the tricky thing about coaching and, and all personal development. It's getting the right questions asked, um, either from yourself or from somebody else. So I learn from people who challenge my my way of seeing the world and who can see my blind sides because I have plenty of those as well, of course. Um, yeah, so I have a group of people that I check in with now and then who challenge me. Yeah. yeah. I learned definitely a lot so far. Yeah. But it can still be hard to give feedback. It can. So if someone wants to learn more about feedback and get some extra help, how, uh, how could they get uh, in contact with you and, and how could you help them out? I think... I think the most important thing to understand about feedback is that it's it's a muscle that we can train. It's a skill that we can practice and and get better at. Um, so I I like to help people with that. Of course, if they need my help, I'm I'm often doing so workshops. All the people sitting out there think, thinking, "Shit, yeah, that made a lot of sense." They go to work, and one week after, they're like, "Okay, damn it, this was not that easy." This guy, Danny, he made it sound so easy. How, uh, how do I do? How do we do it? That's often what happens, actually. People try and they they find out that it was difficult. I just had a customer or potential customer calling me today and saying, yeah, we've tried a lot of different things, but it never really caught on. And that's often what happens, that people um, think that it's easy or they, they give it a go, which I think is great. Please give it a go on your own. I think that's excellent. Try it out, get some experience with it. Um, but make sure that before you... Um, destroy relationships, <laughs> you get some help from somebody. Could be your uh, HR department, or if you are the HR department, then reach out. Um, I, I usually help people with two things. I help them with getting a, <clears throat> in a fun way, a common language. So like you said in the beginning, I also teach at these camps, True North camps, um, uh, which means I just have a playful way of of teaching and making everything a bit of a, a game or a hands-on experience, but I teach just people to note for the ones that never been to Camp Two North. It's a play place with a lot of energy, jumping around, clapping, cheering, having a good time while learning a lot. Absolutely, and I turn that down a notch when I go into companies. There's less yeah. <laughs> less jumping and clapping, but there is definitely movement because we just know that learning happens better that way. <laughs> so, 
I, I typically help people with uh, two things. And one of them is to get that common language so that they feel that they know what to say and how to say it and how to ask for it. That's the beginning part, right? And then they can start practicing on their own. That's one part. And the other part, which is really important, is it's actually a behavior design or nudging maybe, you could call it. It's finding out how does this work in our everyday life. It's really figuring out why is it that we don't give feedback on a daily basis. Because often we have this really good intention of giving more feedback. But the problem is when tomorrow hits, then we forget or then we don't really know how to do it anyway. So we need to build a rhythm around feedback so that we will practice it regularly. Because after, uh, often it just it goes back after a week and then it's gone. And I, I see that all the time. And that's often where I, I make a difference with companies. I, I help them find out where to give it, how to give it, and how to make sure it becomes a habit that, uh, a feedback rhythm, I like to call it. Cool. And where can people find you afterwards if they want to get a hold of you? I try to be active on LinkedIn. So maybe that's the easiest way. But otherwise, my um, my website is called Better Feedback, but in Danish. So that's billafeedback.nu. So it's billafeedback.nu. And I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Yeah, you can do that. Um, and uh, I do presentations in and, and workshops in Danish and English. Um, so it's definitely not a, a problem if we are working with an international company. Um, and then connect with me on LinkedIn if you're curious. I, I do these small videos that people uh, see. They're typically put up on Friday. They're called Friday Feedback or Freitas Feedback. And they're just small tips. So that's a good place to start uh, as well. To Perfect. follow those on LinkedIn. And I'll make sure to put some in the show notes as well. Yeah. So any last advice about how to be the best version of yourself or in regards to feedback before rounding off? I think there's a fun fact that maybe we can round off with, which is uh, the better than average effect. Maybe maybe you've heard about it. It's it's quite popular to uh, because it's a fun fun little fact uh, set of facts, which is that more than half of us think that we're better than average. Yeah, which is theoretically impossible, right? So, I think in a recent book I read, um, it, he said seven out of ten thinks that we're a better friend than the average. And six out of 10 thinks that we're a better colleague than the average. And six out of 10 thinks that we're a better partner. So we have this idea of overestimating ourselves. And I think it's important that we come to the realization that it's probably not true. <laughs> and that's also my my most important advice. If you want to do personal development, you start asking one question. And that is, what's something I don't know about myself? And you don't know if it's important to you or not until you ask it, but start being curious about yourself in areas that you think would be fun to learn about. So could be you want to be more efficient. Start asking yourself and others around you, what's something you see me do that makes me inefficient? Or maybe you want to be a better um, conversationalist. Then you ask people, what's one thing I do that is weird when we have conversations? You know? Be curious about yourself if you want to improve yourself. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for participating. It was it was truly a pleasure and I'm definitely going to be using a lot of these feedback advice. So uh, thank you so much. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of Growth Island. Be sure to subscribe for more episodes on how to be the best version of yourself. And if you found this show helpful, then please leave us a review so more people will learn about the podcast or share with a friend who can benefit from it too. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.